girl. This is my wow. dream come true in my entire life to be able to sit here well, with you. Well, thank you, Sarah. Ever since uh, we first met, we've been good friends, and um, you've been thank a big you. uh, supporter of the Oak Ridge Boys and me, and I appreciate that. I appreciate thank your friendship, you. and uh, it's great to sit here and talk to you, too. Well, I'm so excited. So this is an episode of People of Country Music mm -hmm. and People of Nashville, and I feel like you and the Oak Ridge Boys and everything that you encompass is all about country music i mean you have paved the way for a million people in in music and have done such well, a great you. job and i'm just so proud of you and i'm proud to know you and i'm thank just you. so excited that you're here you know it's kind of funny as some of us were uh, talking just just this morning i was talking to some folks that have a lot to do with the oak Ridge boys and uh talking about how even the last 18 months have been rather incredible sometimes you get to a certain point in a career that's endured for decades and things kind of even out or something. Yeah. But with the Oak Ridge Boys, it seems like something's always going on to, to, to push it, you know, to make it bigger. And uh, the Country Music Hall of Fame induction last year obviously yes. was the biggest thing to ever happen to us ever. And, uh, and then little things come on, like, like singing with Blake Shelton here this year. I saw that on the CMT Awards. Was that cool? That was so cool. Doing I mean, it to country songs. Well, you know, <laughs> Blake has been a friend for a long time, and Blake's one of those guys. You know, there's a few of those guys out there singing these days, like Blake and like Eric Church. Some of these guys that are real students of country music, mm -hmm. that do appreciate where it's come from. I thought Marty Stewart comes to mind because he's such a historian. But mm -hmm. some of the young guys out there singing now really know where it came from. And I know that we've always had a keen sense of who came before us, you know? Yeah. I mean, Merle Haggard and Loretta and Tammy and, you know, I mean, we, we always had a keen respect for, for everybody. And I think some of the kids today don't have that respect, but a lot do. Yeah. And Blake and, like I said, like guys like Eric Church, well, Blake sends me a text right at the beginning of the year. It says, man, I've, I've got this new album coming out. We're really excited about it. I've got this song called Doing It to Country Songs. <laughs> I want you guys on it. He says to me, who do I have to go through to, to get you guys to sing with me? Yeah. I said, Blake, you're going through me right now. <laughs> I said, I'm going to run it by the guys real quick, and all we got to do is find a date. You know everybody's going to be into it. Sure. So on February 1st, we went in the studio with Blake and cut the song, and it was really fun. And then he sends me a text like, um, I guess it was in the beginning of May. It says, man, we're going to do that song on the CMTs. Yes. W would you guys sing with us? I'm thinking, man, nobody's let us near an award show in 10 years. <laughs> That's, of course we will. You're, so. it, you're it, though. That's so fun. Well, and what it did and what it has done is it's put us before a whole new audience again. Yep. Yep. And then during the CMA Fest this year, which we had a lot of activities anyway, but we, right. we went out there that night on his set. He closed, I think, the Friday night show. Maybe it was Saturday, I don't remember. But we went out and sang with him on the stage there. Yep. And so now what they're doing is they're, our manager and his manager and William Morris are putting together festival dates next summer where we're on the same night as Blake. So cool. So we can come out later and sing the song with Blake. That is so fun. So, that you know, so I just love old Blake, man. He's been good to us and uh, I was just at loving. the CMT Awards and one of the, in one of the rows, I had, you know, done some photography and mm -hmm. done the backstage and then in, and I was so excited <laughs> to see you guys. That was the best part. And I was sitting right next to Easton Corbin uh -huh. and he said, that is the coolest thing of yeah. the whole night. Well, it has got coolest of the whole night. Well, what made it cool, too, is Blake not only wanted to do his song, but he wanted to add some Elvira. Yes. He said, yes. we're going to teach these young kids what it's all about and who the yes. Oak Ridge Boys are in case they don't know already. Yep. And so Blake arranged it so that we would go from his song into Elvira. And then you've got like Carrie Underwood and Luke Bryan and everybody up boogieing to Elvira. Yeah. I mean, Carrie was actually shimmying. I saw that. <laughs> on television. <laughs> so, you know, not that I didn't watch the TV tape of it, you know, 20 times. <laughs> but uh, it was a great moment. And, yes. um, and, and just to show you how funny Blake is, he sent me a, another text just a couple days ago of this yeah. interview and uh, just wanted to know how the boys were. Oh. How, how's everybody doing? Is everybody okay? Are you guys out there play, playing a lot? I know you are, but is everybody holding up? Yeah. I mean, that's so nice of him. And what happened was our merchandise guy calls everybody horse. He's one of those guys, he'd call you horse, he'd call everybody horse. And he sends me a text and says, horse, I've got some books in the green room. This was down in, uh, in Hope, Arkansas a couple days ago. I got some books in the green room for you to sign, horse. And I, I sent back just in capital letters, horse. 
but I sent it to Blake. Oh, man. It, it, it didn't go to our guy. It went to Blake. And Blake answers right away, Cal. <laughs> That's how funny he is. So. Okay, so we've conversed over Twitter before. And yes. there, I sent you a note on Twitter just before this interview and said, hey, I sent you some thoughts to your email. Mm -hmm. And my... Before I could hit, like, don't send, it said, I've sent you some hot guys to your email. <laughs> well, I, <laughs> and I was like, okay, I'm laughing so hard, I'm crying, and I'm so mortified, I'm bright red right now. Well, it's, it was, was like, uh, some kind of weird point, typo thoughts, thing. Thoughts, thoughts. Like, no, that's not what I... <laughs> or sometimes an iPhone will, will, will actually, you'll type things in the iPhone, so it's something totally different than what you typed. I know. That's the that's the the glory of technology today. <laughs> I know. You better reread what you what you send people all the time because you never know what it's saying. <laughs> I just hit go and I was like, oh my word, I'm so mad. <laughs> well, you know, it's like you know, you have the grandkids over the house now, and um, everybody's at the house, all the family, and everybody's looking at a device, and you make fun of it. Well, the other day, I, we were all on the bus, going somewhere, and I looked and and just happened to notice that every single guy on the bus had their face in a device. Oh. Oh, yeah. It's like we live in a different day and age now. I know. Are you on Snapchat? Which I no. think, I think if you were, you'd have to call it Snapcat because yeah. you would have all the pictures <laughs> of all your cats all over the Snapchat. <laughs> I'm only a Twitter guy. I don't even do Facebook. We have an Oak Ridge yeah. Boy Facebook page, but I am, I am into Twitter and I'm not on Instagram or Snapchat. I'm not on Facebook because to me, everybody I know, and that's everybody I know that's on Facebook, is on it all the time. Yeah. It drives me a little crazy. Sure. So I, I like Twitter because it's short and sweet. You think of something yes. goofy or weird, you tweet it. Yes. It's there. And I do all the Oak Ridge Boy tweets. And what I try to do at Oak Ridge Boys Twitter, at Oak Ridge Boys, yep. is just take people on the ride with us. Yeah. You know, here's what we're doing, here's how we're doing it. Kind of like yes. my book, On uh, the let's Road. Let's talk about that, On the Road. <laughs> well, On the Road with the Oak Ridge Boys is uh, a fly on the wall book. You know, if you care about the Oak Ridge Boys at all, you will love the book. Yes. If you're a behind the scenes country music person, yep. CMT called this book the best behind the scenes book ever written on country music. That's Isn't that cool? Amazing. That's amazing. So, uh, the book is a Just fly on the wall. It's, it's the Oak Ridge Boys, how we do what we do, how we've done what we've done, how we continue to do what, we've, what we do. It's history, it's about all the guys, it's about the music, yep. it's about the bus, it's about the stage, it's about everything that is Oak Ridge Boys. Plus, I get to write a little extra Joe Bonzel thing here and there, too, which the publisher allowed. Yep. And um, so... About Jesus. Yeah, oh yeah, man. <laughs> Got to write some about Jesus. I mean, to me, you know, and I've written a lot of books, you know that. Yep. And books like G.I. Joe and Lily, and, and from my perspective, and even back to my Molly the Cat children's books, if you're not going to honor God in some way in the writing, I think it's a tinkling symbol. Yeah. Then, then what are you doing? Yeah. It's even like our show at night. I mean, to me, somewhere in the show, we want everybody to have a ball and have fun and hear the hits. But if you don't touch them sometime with something that's yeah. relevant and important and something they can use in their life, yeah. then I think you're a tinkling symbol, as yeah. the Bible says. I think you've got to do that. I mean, the Oaks have that responsibility, I think, to move people in a certain way spiritually, uh, patriotic whatever, when we can. Yes. And um, like, you know, we've talked about our Christmas tour. We're about to embark on a 27th annual Christmas tour. Our Christmas music is the great standards, some great new songs, but somewhere in the middle of all of that, you've got to let the people know what Christmas is all about. Yes. And it's about the birth of Christ and about how much uh, he can mean in your life, you know? And to me, you, you just have to do that. If you're not doing it, I, I don't think you're doing, doing what God wants you to do. And the Oak Ridge Boys have that responsibility. I know in my own writing, yeah. I feel like if I'm not going to move you sometime in there, if I don't have a little something special, then, uh, th then I'm not really doing my job either. And uh, I think God blesses you for these things. I love I that. know He does. He does bless you for those things. I know things. He does. He totally does. Um, part about, you know, on the road with the Oak Ridge Boys, you talk about some collaborations and things mm -hmm. that you've done. We just talked about, you know, doing it to country songs. You right. collaborated with Blake. And... I have to tell you, there is the funniest, coolest song with you guys in the beginning with Johnny Cash, and it's like, praise the Lord for chicken soup. No, pass the Lord and pass the soup. Pass, 
Wait, say it again. Praise the Lord and pass the soup. Praise the Lord and pass the soup. <laughs> well, you know, when you mentioned Johnny Cash, uh, you know, here recently, Johnny Cash's son just put out a four CD set called the Bootleg Sessions. Wow. And there are yeah. 12 of those cuts from the middle 70s, all wow. gospel, that we're wow. on. And wow. if you hear this Johnny Cash project, you'll hear the Oak Ridge Boys on a lot of it. And it was really cool because back in the middle 70s, when we were really needing some help. Johnny Cash was there for us. Yeah. Johnny Cash took us on the road, paid us more than we were worth, inspired us, yep. gave us pep talks. Yep. And then sometimes late at night, we'd, he would call Dwayne Allen and say, the boys want to come in the studio and sing with me. Aww. And he said, well, let me call everybody. If everybody's home, yeah, what time you need? I said, be at House of Cash about 10. Sweet. Dwayne call everybody. Johnny wants us to come down and sing. So Aww. all of these songs you hear on this bootleg session, Johnny Cash uh, collection, yep. They are results of us going down there to House of Cash late at night with just Johnny and a few band members and singing good old gospel songs. Some are standards, some he, would, he wrote. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're songs like Praise the Lord and Pass the Soup. You guys all have to Google that, by the way. Oh, you it do. Is, it's amazing. <laughs> now, the a tidbit on that is yeah. that I was not with the Oak Ridge Boys when they recorded that with John. I joined, oh, okay. they recorded that with John in 72, and I joined okay. the Oaks in October of 73. All yeah. right. So uh, you got Little Willie on there, yeah. Little Willie okay. Wynn singing tenor, but, but still the song is his mind. In fact, when MCA just put out that um, big collection of Oak Ridge Boys music from over the years, yep. they put Praise the Lord and Pass the Soup on the collection. So, so good. it's such a vital part of our history, yes. our relationship with Johnny Cash, you know. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about your life on the farm and, and what that looks like on a <sighs> daily basis. What do you do for fun? Well, let me tell you how this came about, the farm thing. A lot yes. of people think when I talk about the farm, I'm talking about home. We've lived in Hendersonville since 82, right on Old Hickory Lake in a, in a house. Mm -hmm. And we used to go to islands a lot in our younger days. And Mary still says to this day, I'm glad we did all that island hopping when we were young and could really enjoy it. Because I had a lot of money in the early 80s, you know, late, you know. So we, I was making good money. So we would go every year, sometimes twice a year. Yeah. Go to Jamaica one year, go to Virgin Islands another, go to Hawaii, go to Tahiti. You know, wow. and just island hop around. Yes. Well, we used to talk about how cool it would be to own a second home in the islands. We could just go to our home. Like Johnny Cash had a big house in Jamaica that we visited once. Mm -hmm. And um, as we got a little further down the road, we realized that that was not cost efficient and sure as heck wasn't time efficient. Sure. Because flying to even any island took all day. Yeah. And it was a very expensive proposition. Well, I got this letter from an old gospel music friend in Pennsylvania. And he said, hey, you know, uh, my family's got a property for sale in, in Tennessee. It's 50 acres on a mountain. He said, are you, are you interested? So, well, I'll go look at it. Well, it wasn't the property for us. Sure. But we sat on top of that mountain together, and it was so quiet and so nice. And Mary said, we need to find a place in Tennessee, somewhere that's close enough to home, that's not so far away, that we could really enjoy, mm -hmm. and that you could do things you want to do. You know, I said, well, uh, so we looked for about two years. Finally, this real estate lady called me from up around the Tennessee-Kentucky line and said, you need to see this property that this guy's selling. We went down into this holler and looked at this property, about 350, 400 acres, and went, oh my goodness, I'll do whatever it takes to get this property. I had been successful in the stock market at the time, and this was before the crash in 87. Mm -hmm. uh, no, it wasn't. I'm, what am I talking about? It was before the other crash later in the early 90s. This was about 98 we bought the farm. and. Um, I sold a bunch of stock. I paid for about half of the farm in, in, in stock profits. Wow. And I bought this place. I knew it would be a lot of work, yep. but it's, it's got a nice cabin. It's got all this acreage, a lot of fields, a lot of woods. Acres? Yeah. Wow. And I go out there as much as I can. I weed eat, I mow, I cut big fields. Yep. Um, I sit on the porch and play banjo. And it's just a getaway. We've had the place uh, 19 years now. Wow. And it's just, it's just been the greatest blessing in my life. I, I sit out there. My nearest neighbor to my front porch is three and a half miles away. Wow. Now, that's bad if you're having a heart attack. Yeah. But, no. it's, but it's great if you want to just be out there by yourself with nature. I mean, you made I, your own little island. It is my own little island. And you know what? Island. We decided we would quit going to islands and put that money into the farm. Sure. And that's what we did. I also had a big boat out on Old Hickory Lake. I sold the boat and bought a tractor. <laughs> So, you That's know, I'm a, so here's an old kid growing up in Philly on the streets. Yep. We didn't own a tree. We didn't even own a bush. And now I own 
thousands of trees. That's awesome. And uh, you mentioned the banjo. You know, I've been playing banjo for about 14 years now. I really should be better. I took it up at age 54. But the thing is, I've never played an instrument before, and I don't have to worry about, like, I sing professionally, mm -hmm. but I don't have to worry about playing banjo professionally. So therefore, the fun of that, to me, is to sit out there on that porch at the farm and pick, yep. and the coyotes don't seem to mind. <laughs> they don't. They don't seem to mind. And music is beautiful. I just think that it's like, I think that, you know, you can make music a beautiful thing, and if, if well, you're enjoying it, I mean, that's what it's all about, right? Like, well, I it's what it I should like. be all about. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the joy of music. I mean, like, I love singing. Yeah. I love singing with the Oak Ridge Boys. I mean, making that big yeah. sound from behind that mic every night has never gotten old to me. Yeah. And uh, hearing the other guys sing, I mean, it's great to be, as I said, in On the Road with the Oak Ridge Boys, just a spoke in the wheel. Yeah. The big wheel's the Oak Ridge Boys. We all bring individual talent, individual ideas, individual personalities yep. to the big wheel. Yep. And yep. we keep the big wheel turning, and we're just the spokes in that wheel. And I love being a spoke. <laughs> A spoke and a spokesperson for the Oak Ridge Boys. Yes, so you do a very good job. At. <laughs> I think um, the the wheel and lots of spokes reminds me of actually when uh, Little Big Town just to totally go in a different direction. But mm -hmm. Little Big Town, you guys sang on the Opry Elvira together, and yes. that to me looks like an entire bicycle wheel of spokes because you've got like eight people on stage that are rocking out. <laughs> well, you know, we <laughs> mentioned uh, Blake and Eric Church and some others that really uh, care about where it all has come from. Little Big Town's the same way. Yes. In fact, Karen Fairchild, yes. beautiful Karen Fairchild yes. of Little Big Town, yes. came to hear the Oak Ridge Boys when she was a little girl in Maryville, Indiana at the Star Plaza Theater. Wow. And uh, she was just a little girl. Yep. Philip Sweet heard us yep. sing in Charlotte, North Carolina on our big tours in 81 and 82 when he was just a little boy. Wow. So, one of the first big dates they played was a festival in Wisconsin, and they were on right before us. Wow. And yes. we got to know them that night, and they came out and sang Elvira and Bobby Sue with us. That's and they thought amazing. that was so cool that we let them come out and do that. Well, now, years later, they're huge. They're great. They've been together 17, 18 years. I mean, they're no, no oh. new guys. Yeah, They've yeah. paid a lot yeah. of dues. Yeah, spring chickens. And they're, uh, they came out and started doing this bluesy rendition of Elvira. So how cool is and that? Philip leads it out with a very oh, start. Have you, it's, you've heard it, right? I've, I've heard it, yes. Go to YouTube yes. and check out a YouTube video of Little Big Town with Chris Stapleton. Yes. Oh, singing okay. Elvira when very Stapleton was cool. opening for them before the world knew who, who Chris sure. Stapleton was. I knew yes. who he was because he was a lead singer for the Steel Drivers. Yes. And I'm a big bluegrass fan because of my banjo. Yes. So I, would listen, I listened to Chris Stapleton long before everybody knew what a great all of Nashville knew what a great writer he was, but maybe not the vocalist. Yes. But I knew because of the steel drivers. But anyway, he opened for Little Big Town on that tour where they did Elvira the first time. Okay. And if you hear that YouTube video with Chris Stapleton singing and Little Big Town doing Elvira, well, what an honor, man. <laughs> so yeah, one night at the Opry, we all went out there and did some of their version and some of our version all together, and it was just rocking. That is so fun, and it is a very rocking, awesome, an awesome thing to see. Um, so let's talk about the Opry. Yeah. Let's talk about the Grand Old Opry. I'm, I'm a that that's actually for me super special with you guys because it's the first time I got to work with you guys. It is. And I was honored and excited to mm -hmm. take your pictures. <laughs> yes, you there. did, and, and, and um, great pictures you take, well, my dear Sarah. You are a tremendous photographer and videographer. Thank you. Is thank that the right you, word? Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Videography. Whatever you want to call it. It's okay. totally fine. You're Joe Bonzal at the Oak Ridge Boys. You can do whatever you and want, you're really. Sarah Casa. <laughs> totally fine. Tell me about your, do you know the first time that you played on, on the uh, Opry stage? It was way, way back in the, in the um, middle 70s. In yeah. fact, I got a picture somewhere with us and Minnie Pearl and Roy Aka ah, from that night. Yes. And the thing about the Opry that's kind of cool is we would always go play on the Opry whenever invited. Yeah. Our schedule did not allow us that many times to play the Opry. So when we had the chance to do it, it was so cool, whether at the Ryman or the Opry House. And all these years gone by, we always went down to play the Opry whenever they invited us, and we always felt good about it, like I say. Yeah. Then came this one night that we're singing on the Opry stage, and little Jimmy Dickens comes out dressed as William Lee Golden, had the beard and everything. And the whole <laughs> place is laughing, because sure. he's such a funny, he was such a funny guy, and yeah. such a powerful little man. And he came out there and said, the reason I'm dressed like this is because uh, uh, I want to be part of that Oak Ridge Boy family mm -hmm. and let you all know that um, 
that you are, are now a part of our family as the next members of the Grand Ole Opry. Yeah. And it was like the Hall of Fame thing. It was like, what? What did he say? The audience was laughing so hard, we didn't know exactly what he said, but we thought he said that we were about to be members of the Opry. Wow. And that's what he said. Yes. So people have asked all the time, is it any different being an Opry member than just playing the Opry? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It yeah. is. Yeah. It really is. I, I walk backstage there now and I feel part of it. Yeah. I always equate it to the fact that it's like, you know, people have you over the house for dinner quite often. And then one night they say, bring your bags, you're staying. Oh, <laughs> well, you're welcome to come stay and hang out at my house anytime you need to. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and a nice house you have down cool. there, too. Thank I've you. seen Thank your you. pictures. Thank you. We have, a, we have a farm that I've, you know, kind of has the same little. Yeah, little it's got that so quiet, I, serene thing to it, doesn't it? I get it. it? And uh, I, get I knew it. you would get it. Yeah. Um, so maybe just a little bit of inspiration for, you know, I know that you, Mary Sarah, is a really. Mm -hmm. You've helped her along the way, Texas girl, and you've kind of given her a lot of advice. Mm -hmm. But what's maybe one thing that you've inspired and given her advice to that you could kind of share with somebody that, that is so excited and wants to be in your shoes one day? Well, I think, first of all, you've, you've got to have a very special talent. Yeah. The business has always been crowded. And I think in this day and age, there's more people wanting to be a country star than I've ever seen in my life. Really? Nashville, Tennessee is packed with young guys in cowboy hats and a guitar mm -hmm. and young pretty girls yeah. that want to sing. And some of them are really, really good. You know, we talked about Mary Sarah. You talked about Sarah Darling, your good friend, who's just extraordinarily good. Mm -hmm. And how tough it is to, to just persevere. But what you've got to do is if you've got the talent and you're moving people with the talent, like yeah. Mary Sarah say just did on The Voice. Sure. Okay. Um, she moved people. Yeah. So you know if you're moving people or not. Yeah. If they're responding big time to what you have to bring and what you have to offer, then you've got a chance then. Yeah. And then what you've got to do is not leave go of your dream. You've got to keep plowing. You've got to be willing to work hard and sacrifice. And it may take a while, but if you pay that price, Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a few overnight successes. There may be a few acts that all of a sudden have a hit record and all of a sudden riding in a big Prevo bus. Yeah. But a lot of us rode for years in cars and vans pulling trailers yeah. long before Maybe there was ever is. the nice big Prevo bus. Yeah. And there may be some people out there that it happens overnight, but most acts, I don't care who you talk to, worked a long time before everybody realized who they were. Yeah. You know, let's take Vince Gill. I knew Vince yes. Gill back in his starving days in the middle 70s. Wow. He sang great, wrote great songs, but nobody cared. Mm -hmm. But he never gave up. Yeah. And all of a sudden, boom, Vince Gill got really big there. Sure. And his talent and his hard work paid off yep. because he never gave up. So you just can't give up. That, that's, that's the main thing, not giving up. Not give up. And you had mentioned Chris Stapleton, too, and I think mm -hmm. a lot of people think that he's an overnight <laughs> success and no, you know, thinking really hard about that he's, he's been doing this for writing songs and, you know, making things There's very few overnight successes. You, like I say, you see a few young kids out there in their 20s that all of a sudden a big sign with a big label. They've got the talent, obviously, or they wouldn't be having any success. Sure. I have respect for anybody that, su that succeeds in this business. Yeah. I don't like all of the new country, but I like most of it. Yeah. And I don't have to listen to what yeah. I don't like. That's why God and Steve Jobs gave us an iPod and <laughs> iTunes. You don't want to listen to Florida Georgia Line? Listen to the Oak Ridge Boys. We must have 30 albums on iTunes. <laughs> you don't want to listen to Luke Bryan, maybe? Well, listen to Merle Haggard. Yeah. He's there. Yeah. Listen to George Jones. Listen to Loretta Lynn if you don't want to listen to Miranda. Yeah. I mean, you know, the choices are there. We can listen to who we want to. The good news is there is a lot of these kids making great music, and they've taken country music to a place it's never been. It's that. bigger than it's ever been. Country music is now the new American music. Yep. And I've got to give the kids today all the credit for that. Yep. And uh, I know some of them were inspired by us. Well, I got yes. news. The Oak Ridge Boys are inspired by a lot of you, too. Any new collaborations that you're, you know, coming up with that you want to talk about? Any new There's a new one in the works. You know the contemporary gospel group, Third Day? Yes. Uh, they've just recorded Loves Me Like a Rock and invited us to sing on it with them. That's amazing. So uh, I wish I could go back to my chapter and On the Road, the backing up chapter. Yeah. Gosh, I got so much to add here since that book came out. I mean, you know, Blake and now Third Day, and we just sang on a Mo Bandy record. There's oh, a new Mo Bandy just came out. We're on two cuts. Oh, my goodness. And uh, 
That, well, I mean, just, that's the start of another book. Oh, it may I mean, be. come on, that's, that's, that's inspiration. But where? yeah, we're, we're going to be working with Third Day, and that, that's going to be a lot of fun because we love those guys. They're good guys, mm -hmm. and they do a great work, too. Mm -hmm. And um, we've got our big Christmas tour coming up, our 27th annual Christmas tour. This year it's kind of on the East Coast, South, a little Midwest, and in Florida. Coming down to Florida, we'll see you in Florida. Mm -hmm. And um, we've got a new Christmas album out called Christmas Celebration coming out this year. Amazing. So we've we'll recorded our 150th Christmas album, you know. <laughs> and uh, then I made Blake laugh with that the other day, by the way. He said, you guys, did you do that new album we were talking about? I says, no, it's next year. We're hoping to go in the studio next year. I told him we recorded our 150th Christmas album, though, and that made him laugh. <laughs> but we, we're, we're planning on going in with a top producer in 2017 and recording a brand new album of all new material. Oh, that's so fun. So again, that opportunity looks like it is presenting itself. And if this all comes down, um, we'll have new music out next year as well. So we're excited. So Other than that, come see us. Go to oakridgeboys.com. Look at that schedule. Follow us at Oak Ridge Boys. Follow at Joe Bonzel. Follow at Sarah Koss. She's, she's on Twitter as well. We're all on Twitter. Everybody's on Twitter. <laughs> uh, we have an at in front of our name. <laughs> <laughs> We're all at something now. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? The way that we are, you know, found in the world. Oh, is... it's, it's, uh, the social network thing is just huge. But you're so fun. Everybody does actually need to follow you on Twitter. Because oh, thank it is, you. you are so much fun, especially if you like cats. They're very fun. And you like little funny sort of things just to kind of brighten your day. You're so I, had a guy un I had a guy unfollow me the other day. He says, hey, man, I love you, but I, yeah. it's just too much cat stuff for me. No, it's great. <laughs> So, you know, I do love my cats. No, my goodness great. gracious, I think they're wonderful creatures. I just adore them. And we just, uh, this past year we lost two, and that's really hard. Yes. And uh, we're down to five. We had nine a couple years ago. We're down to five. Yes. And my wife's already told me, if you bring home another kitten, you're a dead man. No, 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 no. No, I'm a dead man. She says, let, let, we've already gotten old enough. Let's get old with the, older with the ones we've got. Oh. And... Um, no, no more new ones. She said it's hard to take when they go. No, oh, it is. So, hard. Oh, well, when you lose, you puppy. lose friends. You lose, an, you lose a good friend, pet. Yes. They're, they're part of the family, they you know. Are. And if they live with you every day, and you get to know them, yeah. they get to know you, become yeah. a big part of your life, dogs or cats. Yeah. And uh, so it's, it's hard to lose them. I, I get what she means. Yeah. I know this much. I ain't about to bring home another kitten. <laughs> <laughs> it's way too much work. But thanks Very for the compliments. I do enjoy Twitter. I enjoy yes. yeah, I enjoy the fact that you can come up with something and just tweet it. So and uh, and and I am. Um, and I like to see the banter back and forth with everybody. You know, yeah. because everybody likes talking to you guys. Like they it's do. so cool, and it's just you're so inspiring. So well, it affords you. an opportunity to talk to people that you didn't yes. have before. Sure. In my ne in my chapter on social networking, I talk yeah. about the fact that you know years ago, um, say we're playing the Kentucky State Fair, I might have got a letter from somebody who's whose mother turned 85 and loved the Oak Ridge Boys and would you do a certain song or maybe mention her on stage. And I might have missed that mail because you get so much mail and yep. stuff falls through the cracks. But in social networking, a tweet or an email or a text or something yep. uh, or through the website message board, they can come right to me and say, hey, would you shout out to my mom? She's 85 at the Kentucky Fair and I'll see that yep. and I'll make a note of it yep. and I'll shout out to her and it'll mean a lot to her to do yes. that and to the son yes. and the grandson yes. and so when you can do that and you know be a blessing to people and make them happy oh. uh, why not do it i mean geez well you were a blessing to me today to come and do this with me thank so. you sarah <laughs> Sa thank and you. you have been a blessing to my mother you got to meet my mom too. i one did day. and uh, boy that so was ever more you. your mother too <laughs> You could tell that was your mom, yeah. Yeah, that was a fun adventure. So thank you for being just a wonderful light in my life and, and doing this today. And thank you, Sarah. Being a part of this I appreciate show. your friendship as well over all these years, and I hope thank it continues. You. Thank you. Well, this has been an episode of People of. You can um, featuring Joe Bonsall. Thank you so much at the Oak Ridge Boys, the mm -hmm. legendary Oak Ridge Boys. I'm com crazy honored to have had him on this show. So thank you, thank you, thank you. You can follow. Like Joe said, you can follow along um, on my website, on the RSS feed, on my blog at sarahkaus.com. You can also, you can also be, um, you can also find the show on YouTube, and you can download the podcast on iTunes. Cool. So it'll be available in audio form as well. So all the things, and you can find Joe, like he had said, um, at Joe Bonsall mm -hmm. on Twitter, and um, at the Oak Ridge Boys, at put everything at. 
Everything's at, and I have a website, Joseph bon, josephsbonsville.com. Yes, it's very fancy. Yes. And you can read all, and he's constantly updating the excerpts and, and blog posts. Yeah, I like to, I have a little section there called Other Writings. Yes. And every once in a while, something will hit me to write about that's not in a book, and I just put it on the website. So yeah. it's like free reading. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't have to buy anything, just, you just read it. And it's very creative and very entertaining. You have a very great way of, of writing. You. So if you haven't got the book, you also need to get, which you can get on Amazon. and. Mm -hmm. Where's the best place to get the book? I think Amazon.com is probably cool, the okay. easiest. Put put Bonzel, Joseph Bonzel, B-O-N-S-A-L-L. -L. Put On the Road with the Oak Ridge Boys. All my books will come up. They're all there.